Look at the person sitting next to you. Tell them that question. To serve or to be served, which is your mission on earth? David, did you say that? Do you say I search them? What is the answer? <laughs> okay. We live in an era where people want to be served. And it has come into the church. And so today we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that. I'll read for you. Matthew chapter 20, verse 26 to 28. Yet it shall not be among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Um, whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Father, we praise you. I praise you. I honor you. I glorify your name. Thank you so much that I can be uh, behind this pulpit, Lord, to declare your word. And your word is holy. Lord, word is perfect. Your word, Lord, uh, help us to access salvation. Your word can transform us. As I speak, Lord, and you say you change people's heart through the foolishness of, of the preaching. And use my predication, Lord. Use the message to enter into the hearts of each one of them, each one of us here. And help us, Lord, not just benefit from it, but be blessed by the word that has been shared. Quicken me as I speak so that I can speak by your know thing and for your glory. I pray to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So we live in an egocentric world where everyone wants to be in top of others by all means necessary. People trick, people lie. People do all kinds of things so that they can come out on top. Many come to this world thinking that everybody owes them something. You know, everybody owes you something. And so when living in a civilized country like the um, uh, United States of America, it, that makes it even worse because you will take it for granted. If I was not born in Haiti, uh, I probably would not be so thankful of so many services you receive in, in the United States of America. And... So because of the many social uh, services and assistances that we are received, that are offered uh, to, as, as, uh, to the less privileged, so we, 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 don't even, we don't even know, we don't even appreciate it. You get up, you just want to be served, you know? And I used to drive school buses, certain neighborhood, You'll see people say, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And all the neighborhoods just, you know, just look at you and then going out. And they come in. It's like two different. One, one group of people think you owe them. The other group uh, feel even if we pay our taxes and that you are working for your money, but we thank you for availing yourself to drive the school bus. So you see the difference? Two, two kind of people. So the whole town helps to pay for your free bus. But you do not know that. Your free education, like, like many people, when you see Haitians are very smart, but many of them have not gone up in schools. You know why? There was no free elementary school. There was no free uh, uh, high school. Many people... Now, the parents can't afford the full school fee, and that's where they stop. But here, you got the free school, the free school bus, the free lunch, free lunch, talk. <laughs> free notebook, free internet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Even in private school, we don't see those things in Haiti. So, um, your free education is at the expense of others. Your Free health care. Uh, America offers health care to many less privileged 
uh, your free health care is very costly to others. The highways you drive, the hospitals, the police, the firefighters, the military, the shelters are all supported by taxpayers. It's not free. People are paying, 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 paying. So even your bus fare, when you say, it costs, you know they raised the, the price of the bus, it's, now it's one dollar. Now it's two dollars. I used to pay ten cents. Do you know that when you pay one dollar, some they all, it costs like five, six, seven dollars for to get you from here to there. When you pay one dollar, that's just a reduced fee, and the whole, the rest of the town pays for the bus fee. The rich person now, you find a lot of people complaining. How come I'm paying all these taxes for no reason? You know, and then others are benefiting. You know, when you when you're not when the when you are in the receiving end, you don't see any problem. But when you when it's your paycheck, they they just zap on your paycheck. You don't like that. Many of you don't know that. I I my daughter when she started working, she kept envisioning the big pay. You know, per hour and then how many hours, and she was shocked to see how they they just <laughs> take so much of it. <laughs> so the rich person feels that he's overburdened by the high taxes that he has to render, that's imposed to him, that he has to render to the government, forgetting that, that it, all the, if those infrastructures, you know, everything, the highway, the, the everything, the, the tax system, the police, the this, the this, the that, if these things were not in place, you could not be wealthy. A lot of people are working hard, they cannot be wealthy because there's not a system to, they don't have a system to, 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 to channel them to accumulate wealth. You know, in Haiti, right now, a lot of people close their shop, close everything they were doing as, in terms of business because there's no infrastructure to support the existence of the business. So even when you feel they're taking too much, you're still living by grace. And so many quickly forget how much was invested in them, in their way of life. Many people make it to life, to financial aid, you know, what's the other thing after financial aid? Grant, what are those other names? You know, there are all kinds of names. Uh, 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 there's another name, I forget. Sponsorship, anyway. But when they finish school, they just see how much, how hard it was for them to study and pass. It was, they forget, it's, it's as if everything was on their shoulder and a lot of people come out, never remember people behind them. And I like it when people who graduate, like we do here, uh, we have people who have graduated, created things to, for the people to, to, to help them to get there too. So it's really good to remember that. So everyone prefers to be served instead of serving, don't we? People do all they can to position themselves well in life so that they can be the one being served instead of the one serving others. Jesus says the exact opposite when it comes to the kingdom of God. You cannot have this approach for the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we are all servants. Can you say that to somebody for me? In the kingdom of God, we are all servants. We serve one another. We are all servants. Nobody in the kingdom of God is on welfare. I help you, you help me. Each one of us have gifts that God bestowed upon us so that we can be useful to one another. I'm preaching so that you can inculcate the word of God. You sing, you know, the, 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 the praise. Just, you know, enrich my soul. Now I'm preaching, I'm doing. We're all doing it for one another. Jesus said the exact opposite. In Matthew 20, verse 26, it says, It shall not be like that among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Your servant. You know, church is made up of many offices, and I have people who always desire to be in the great offices of pastors making decisions, especially money decisions. People love to be in the making decisions, and but I have a lot more work that I can find volunteers for. I have the, 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 the trash 
Every week I have to keep looking for trash. I have, I have to clean up this yard. I have to do a whole lot of work, but I have no volunteer. But if, if I say I need somebody to help control other people, where's your hand? I'll have people always in their hand because people love to be served, be respected instead of serving others. And how do I, we acquire, you know, how we how to acquire greatness in serving of others? Because when you see a servant, you see somebody busting you out, and, you know, and then you're doing all the work, somebody's sitting there. And that's why you see when you see servant. So greatness is not automatically acquired in serving others, but the motive of your service. Why? The motive of your service must be unselfish. You know, if you serve others to so that people can look at you, you know, so that people can take great of you. Your motive is already bad. You're seeking for glory. So many venture in business with one M and one M only to make a big profit, to make a lot of money as possible. For example, most of the great and successful enterprises we see to, that sustain uh, the ages, the ups and downs, they came to existence to, in order to fulfill the need of others. Okay, let's say uh, you're somebody who knows how to cook, and you wake up in the morning, you see a lot, bunch of people rushing to go to work, and you know these people didn't have time to prepare a proper breakfast, and that burdens you, you know, like people are eating junk because they don't have time to prepare breakfast, they're rushing to work. And you say, let's say, um, such a burden, because of, uh, it becomes such a burden for you, you decide that you're going to wake up earlier than the rest of them, and you're going to prepare a nice, you know, complete breakfast, the kind my wife gave me in the morning. She, she gives me so much breakfast, I, I must tell you. But it has to be complete. She said, the breakfast is the big food, this is when you should really eat the big food. And then she'll give me a big food in the afternoon too, but in, in, the, in the at noon. So I don't know when do you eat the small food. <laughs> but he, she really wants you to eat well in the morning. And my belly, you know, sometimes. Uh, anyway, I, let's talk about somebody else. <laughs> and you say you wake up early, and you say I'm gonna make a breakfast affordable. I'm not gonna charge them too much. I just want enough to keep it afloat. And you start that restaurant, and in, instead of charging them $10, you charge them $4.50 or $5. And with $5, somebody was walking around with a complete meal for breakfast. Are you following? Okay, now. And the word get out of town. The, get, the, word, the, the word get out of town. And all of a sudden, the word get out of town, people start coming to your restaurant. Come to a restaurant. Before long, you have to hire people to, to do because everybody's finding out that you're doing such a good job. And after a while, your single restaurant is not enough. The word, the word get out in other, in other uh, town. Now, you have to have not just one restaurant. You have one here, one there, one there, one there, one there. And it becomes a franchise. And you actually make a lot of money. But because you were trying to make so much money, but you were trying to alleviate the needs of others. Are you following? Now, another person, uh, um, seeing the, how much money can be made and in, in the breakfast business, say, oh, man, I got to. I got to start a restaurant in the morning. People will buy. People will really buy food. And they start that restaurant, same like you, trying to mimic everything you do, except that the motive is not to the people. The motive is selfish. They want to be rich out of people. And then you see, the person who was doing it just to solve the problem, sometimes I had some bad days. But they're happy to see the people eating the food. Sometimes they make a loss. It doesn't matter. Because what they created the restaurant for, it's been serving its purpose. You know, they're so happy. They're so fulfilled. But the ones who are doing it just to make the money come a shot, 
come a loss, if they experience loss, all of a sudden they want to shut all these restaurants. So the second they have category will never be satisfied. First, it, because it started with a selfish motive. Second, the priority is not service, but profit. So for no legitimate reason, you hear that they're closing so many restaurants, so, so many stores, so many branches. Right now, you may have a store. Uh, I heard that a big chain of stores market is closing. It's not because it's not making profit, but it's not making as much profit as they would want to see. Therefore, it's no longer in existence. What about all these people who are depending on that? You know, I live in the neighborhood. Forget them. We're not making enough money. Just close it. See how selfish things are? You see? Because the motive was not service. The motive was profit. So, what is greatness from the optic of God, from the sight of God? What is greatness? Matthew chapter 18 verse 4 says, Therefore, whoever humbles himself like a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. It's not whoever bit his stomach, whoever pretends to be the greatest, but whoever humbles. There's a greatness in humility. You know, the, the greatness of a person is tightly rela related to the, how humble this person is. When you see a person is humble, I mean, this person is big in the sight of, when I see a person who could be puffed off, is humble, talking to everybody, playing with everybody, that person is big in my sight because the person could have done otherwise. And I try to be this to people who, you know, especially we have a lot of people who just came from Haiti, you know, they, in their mind, these people have money, we just come, we have no money, these people with this. But they're so shocked to see how interested I am. I don't have money, but they, oh, they, they are the same to me than they are than, than the others. They're shocked to say it's true, and then it does something to them when you treat them in a way that is, uh, that is honoring to God. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 1, you know what God says? Whoever is the greatest among you shall be your servant. You know, some teams, they, they hire the workers. Are you, are you there? I don't see anybody. I, some teams hire the workers. And I mean, they, they, they have the players. And they have another guy that nobody talks about. Which other guy that nobody talks about that part of the team that travels with the team all the time but doesn't play? The water guy. Okay? You don't think of much, okay? The water guy. We don't need him. You need the water guy. What if you don't have a water guy? You're going to die. Out of this, he goes there, he goes there, make sure the water is there. <laughs> if I say, who wants to be a water guy? <laughs> who wants to be a water guy when you go up? Nobody will say yes. I know these two, they don't want to be one guy. <laughs> you want to be the players, right? The players work in the big box. Okay. But chances are you're, not, you're probably not going to make the team because there are so many talents. And you will never get <coughs> the traveling, the free traveling, the free hotel, the free days. Because if you're not a player, you don't want to be part. You know, nobody, nobody fires the water guy. Nobody blames the water guy when the team lose. He, he's got the security. This job is secured. <laughs> See? But if it's not there, people can die on the field just because of water. See? It's indispensable. People don't know how indispensable. But this guy is indispensable. He keeps the team going. That's what he does. And the Bible says, whoever wants to be great... Among you, let him be your servant. I have people, I, the other day I was saying that to my wife. They, um, when we see what's important, what's not important. And I, I don't want to be too specific. But there are people who are indispensable to this church. That they don't pray, they don't preach. This person, there's one person I'm thinking right now who's indispensable for the church. Who doesn't do all the same? Who doesn't give the biggest money? 
this person avails herself to clean this place every single week without ever asking for a dime. Every single week, sometimes you feel she's so sick to do it. She's just barely can stand. She's doing it, and the place is always smelling good, always looking good. This person even come to our ch uh, PM church sometime. This person is more indispensable than a pastor. A pastor would just sit in church doing nothing. I, you know, I don't care if the pastor doesn't come or doesn't come this week. You don't feel nothing. If the person who cleans this place doesn't come, you will see dirt all over the place. Are you following? So in God's sight, when God is looking, God doesn't look at the education and all that. God is looking, who did, who get my work done? And a person who availed himself to be a servant is the person who makes sure that the work is done. From God's optic, one is great by the size of the gap he fills in order to make it plain for others. You know, it's like there's a gap between here and there. You great in the sight of the Lord. You say, people who walk there are going to fall. So I'm going to stand right there so that people can step over me to get here. So nobody even remember you. They just walk on you to get there. Walk on you to get there. And that's why God says you are great when you avail yourself to make it plain for others. Jesus came on it just for that, to exchange his righteousness with our iniquity. We could not save ourselves. Jesus came on it to be declared curse so that we can be declared blessed, the righteousness of God. You know what Jesus did? It's like we were all the sinners were in a big hole. Jesus jumps in the hole so that he can become the ladder. We can step on his head to get out. He come. He's in there. Nobody's getting him out. His last one in there. No one to kick him out. But he he volunteers there, and so that we can tip, you know, put our foot on his head and get out of the hole. So that's what Jesus do. Does. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, it says, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see the offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. So when you avail yourself to do what God wants you to do, it may, it may start as if, you're losing your time, but the work of God will prosper because somebody availed themselves. And it's been a year plus since we've started the PM Church. Only those of you who are in leadership in the PM Church now can appreciate what's going on to lead a church, don't you see? It's a burden. By Wednesday, you already have to know what's going on. You can't wait for Saturday. You can't wait. Am I right? You got to keep thinking of what song we're going to do next. You got to, you, all week long, you got to keep thinking of that. And people don't even know, they don't even appreciate that. They don't know what it takes to do that. But you have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it for five people, for ten people, for twenty people. You have to keep doing it. And that's what you do. You do it. You do it. You're discouraged. You do it. Lord, I'm doing it, but I'm discouraged. Lord, I, Lord I'm trying to serve you, but I'm discouraged. You do it. And one day you will hear, Welcome, good and faithful servant. You were faithful in little. I know that when you were not popular before doing this, but you were good. You were good. You were faithful. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's not easy being on my spot. I'm, I do Bible study. I do a whole lot of work. A whole lot of work. I'm inside everybody's life. Sometimes I'm not in your life. Doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. I'm on. I'm, I'm taking care of everybody, and sometimes I'm forgotten. People forget me. As I never see somebody ask me, Pastor, what's your size? Uh, my height. Uh, somebody's going to buy me something. Somebody <laughs> Nobody ever asked me for my size. What should I'm sure you were, Pastor. Nobody knows the size. What should I wear? By the way, 13. <laughs> for you guys who are, uh, okay, 12D, you know. I could wear 12, but 12 is too tight. So 
13, Olivia. Okay. Uh, now you <laughs> save your piggy bank. It bypassed a, a good Nike. <laughs> okay. It doesn't have to be Nike. All right. So after he has suffered, he will see the light. Uh, of, he will be satisfied. Great things will happen after. God will reward his faithful servant. If you are a servant of God, God will reward you. You don't, don't feel that people have to compensate for you. God will reward you. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Listen, let's read that together because it's important. Matthew 25, verse 21. Let's read it together. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Read the other part. You were faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. And joy, enter into the joy of the Lord. And I like what it says in Luke chapter 19, verse 17. And it says to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Come. You were faithful in very little. I'll give you authority over ten cities. That's to show how much God is going to reward those who play servants. Because you, when you're servant, it's like little. But God will put you as rulers. God has a certain way to work it out so that who, uh, for the one who accepts to play the role of a servant ends up being the greatest among them. Uh, before I'm a pastor, senior pastor that is, you can see I'm, I'm youngest among the pastors, yet I'm the senior pastor. It's not that I'm, be I'm better than them or more educated, God so do it. But before I become that, I was, I drive, the, I drove the van at times. I do Sunday schools. When I was a youth, I was a youth president. Always have people in my car. You know, I'm carrying like the car is supposed to have five people. I'm carrying like ten. You know, I don't know how. Don't ask me how. I had a station wagon. You know, I don't know how we fit them. We fit them and all. You know, just push the it and then we'll go places. I I never could save money because when I go to Burger King, everybody wants a burger. You know, I never could save money. And little by little, little by little, it was fun having my youth that way. I didn't know I was going to become a pastor. I was going to be, you know, elevated to any position. But God was seeing me being faithful in little things. And he had this position. And you see how God works things out so that, you know, and both me and, and my wife have been doing work like that at those low capacities for God. And then when God wants to elevate, he already has a name. Somebody who already has a track record who's been working not for glory, but just to get the work done for the love of God. So the work of God is in great distress right now because very few want to shoulder in to carry the load. Very few people want to carry the load. So we've become mere consumers instead of service. See, if I say, who wants to serve? It's very slim, but who wants to be served? It's order. I find that the greatest uh, volunteer group you can get is from age 12 to 18. You know, like that's when people want to. But after 18, they, they get used to money. When you say, who wants to do that? They want to know what money is involved, how much, how much I'm making here. <laughs> so I'm getting... <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting you guys to do a lot of work. The other day, I, I asked uh, a young man here to do work for me. And I say, I'm going to give you $50. He was like, I hey, okay, I'm happy. You know, <laughs> but if he, uh, if he was 21, $50, <laughs> he would look at me, $50? What the pastor think? <laughs> but right now, if I say $50, yeah. <laughs> So you guys don't go older, okay, so that you can remain this humble. Uh, so we become consumers instead of servers. We even criticize those who are serving. That's the other thing. You're not doing anything, but you're criticizing. The church was boring. Why don't you give your name 
so to to help uh, the worship was not elevated did you help you don't even sing when people are singing you don't even open my mouth to sing now you're criticizing God has saved us into good works that he had prepared for us. God saved you by grace, but he saved you to do good work. Every Christian should, should be engaged in doing something, should be engaged in doing something for the kingdom of God. There's no observers in the kingdom of God. You should be doing something. If you're not doing anything, ask God, what is it you want me to do? You know, even invite somebody to church. Ask God what you want me to do. God uh, coming to church is not considered work. See, Christians should be edifying one or another by giving and receiving. You giving, I'll give you my gift. You give me your gift. You, you see, right now, I'm sitting here. This is in PowerPoint. I prepared the PowerPoint. I prepared the message in Word and PowerPoint. This is the Word, and that's the PowerPoint. But I can't be doing it. Right now, somebody else has to do the technical. You see, we edifying one another. One another. We edifying one another. So in heaven, we words and crown will be given to those who have labored for God while they were living on earth. Don't, don't wait until you get to heaven and you want to serve God. No. If you want to serve God, that's the time to do it while you are on earth. Jesus will be at the door of heaven to say, Welcome, good and faithful servant. Come to this place of your father. So if you're in church, you're doing nothing, it's not a good posture. It's not a good posture. If you're not involved, it's not good. Because that's how the rest of the world is. They don't want to get involved. See, You want to push, I don't want to push. I don't want people to criticize me. They don't want to do any efforts. And then it, the disease is now with the adults so much and if they manage to make it on time in church it's like they should be rewarded to make it on time so it's terrible and i hope that that's a change among you you are a servant you belong to the kingdom of god you're a soldier you need to carry your part you need to do your part you need to edify the church if you have money you bring of your money to edify the church. If you got talents, you bring the talents. Whatever you got, you bring it and you glorify God with, with who God make you to be. Let's all be servers. Let's give up on being, ser uh, being served. You don't only, you know, don't, don't look out to be served by others, but prepare yourself to serve. And while you're serving others, others also will be serving you and we can edify one another. Amen. May God bless you.